Hello, everybody, and welcome to maybe the first YouTube musical double header. Here's see, me and Rudolph. <laughs> I just shot an episode about an hour and a half ago. I'm playing catch up, kids. Welcome to the newest, newest episode of Psychos Platters, episode 48. That's right, 48. Want to let you guys know, 85 subscribers, a little over 7,700 views. Let's keep it going, kids. I'd like to see, um, well, I don't know, I think it's realistic. I'm sorry. I think it is realistic that I that we could get to 100 subscribers by the end of February and maybe 10,000 views by my YouTube anniversary of April 1st. Seriously. I don't know if any of you guys remember how I started in YouTube in the first place, was this would have been going about two, three years ago. Um, I am originally from near Chicago, and there was a opening for a for the Chicago Cubs uh, public address announcer. That's what it was. The guy of 17 years was leaving, and they were having an open cattle call YouTube audition. So I applied. Why not? I love the Cubs, even though they... Are they ever going to get to a World Series by the time I'm still alive? Or am I going to have to be like Futurama and be the head of Paul P. that actually witnesses the Cubs win the World Series in the year 3002? I, I, I don't know. They better be quicker than 3002. But the point of the matter is, is that's how I started my YouTube um, account. Followed, of course, by the Etc. Show with Paul Pease, which was my general news show, which has been on hiatus, although that will probably be coming back in stops and starts. Psycho's Platters has been the most popular choice, um, literally, of what I have done, along with the concert videos that I have shot over the years, uh, starting with, uh, what did I start with? I'm not even quite sure. I can't remember. I want to say it was, uh, well, John Oates was one of them. Oh, Primus. I've, done, I've shot video, the concert vids from Primus, uh, John Oates, Pat Benatar, Monkeys, Little River Band. Um, I know there's another one I'm missing in there somewhere. That's what happens when you get to be middle, middle age. But if you do not like this channel, go subscribe. I'm always going to keep putting things up as long as I'm around. Um, there will always be one of these shows a concert vid, it'll be something that'll always be, well, hopefully entertaining to most of you, okay? So uh, enough of the long-winded stuff. Here is some more things that I have accumulated over the last few weeks. Like I said in last episode, I was sick for a couple, for about close to two weeks, and that and the holidays, believe it or not, didn't bring up very much out and about in the resale shop community. Um, I do have one little nugget of surprise here I think you will like that I'm going to save till the end. But let's get to the to the non-record miscellaneous. I had a copy of this a long, long time ago, and it disappeared in a move. So to re-find it back for a buck, sadly, sh this is, of course, after now his death. Light My Fire, My Life with the Doors from Ray Manzarek. Really, really good read. This one here was written in 98, okay, in 1998. There's the front, here's the back, because he also used to um, do film directing and stuff like that. So, I mean, this I like the back photo of this. Uh, tells of his history pretty much. I mean, he does do a backstory. He actually was originally born in Chicago. Yes, he was, and then, and then um, had a small band with his brothers, uh, Rick and the Ravens was the name, and if I remember correctly, um, Belushi, John Belushi had some involvement in that, so I thought that was kind of neat in itself um, back in his Chicago days, and then of course he moved out to Cali and bumped into Morrison, and guess what, the rest was history. Uh, after, after Jim's death, non-death, yeah, I'm one of those ones that don't think he died. In 71. I think he's dead now, but he didn't die in 71. I don't care what anybody said. I think personally, uh, with 
I, I didn't realize until I read this book, okay, <clears throat> that, yes, okay, the Miami incident where he exposed himself, but he really didn't. He didn't expose himself. He, Ray was there. He saw the whole damn thing. Jim was playing theater of the mind. He was good at mind games and drinking. You got that, okay? And he was messing with his boxers. He had a bullfighter's cape. I don't think he exposed himself. I really don't. But back then in the late 60s, the cops, which were establishment people, really overall didn't want to see 60s rock anyway. They didn't like the drug scene in the first place. They didn't like the anti-war scene. The climate and the environment of the whole entire era at that time was anti-youth and, and anti-rock and roll, okay, especially with the way it changed with psychedelic. So they just wanted an excuse to bust Morrison because the arrest warrant for that particular show wasn't even issued for several days later, and the band took a break, okay? Some of them went to, like, Jamaica. Some of them went, I, I, um, you know, other places, and they get, you know, Morrison gets busted for this. It's like, come on. Well, the thing is, is that the judge at the time was up for re-election, and he just wanted to be a hard ass. So he went off, and Jim was looking at jail time. He was. No matter what happened, he looked at, I think he looked at a, um, a, at least a year or two. He looked like he was going to go to jail for a year or two, you know, sometime in 71. So it's, I think back then that it's half funny that Jim was able to buy a ticket to Paris. He was always talking about going to Paris anyway with Pam, and he did it. And he didn't want to deal with the doors anymore. Okay, um, L.A. Woman was a was a good album. He loved it. He was very receptive to it, better than Morrison Hotel, at least from what I'm reading in the book here. And uh, he really loved it, but he kept hemming and hawing about his return. He wasn't that enthusiastic. I honestly think he faked his death so that he just didn't want to do it anymore. He was talking about um, quitting. The Doors, as, as I want to say, let's see, what was it, around the time of Soft Parade, the fourth album, he was talking about getting out then, and, and, and his psyche was changing and everything, you know, at least, as, you know, according to Ray's point of view, okay, so I don't, I don't think Morrison died in 71, I really, really don't, uh, I think he is dead now, um, I think basically, um, I mean, if he's still alive, I'd be amazed. But if you open that coffin over in Paris, I think it'd be empty or be full of bricks. I really do. He he pulled the uh, he pulled the disappearing act that was really good. So at least we still have the music to go on. So that was the book I got. Sorry for being long-winded, but you know, rock theories are rock theories. I I'm a conspiracist. If you haven't figured that out, we'll talk about the the uh, murder of Jimi Hendrix another day. Yeah, I do think he was murdered, and I have my reasons. So, okay, um, vinyl-wise, I, I found a little bit in a couple different places. First of all, um, many, many episodes ago, I got half excited. I think I showed you a Buddy Holly album, but unfortunately, there was no damn album in it. It was a sleeve, though, that was in great shape. They gave it to me for nothing. Eventually, what I want to do... Um, Oh, hell, we might as well go into this topic, too, then. Sorry, we're being long-winded. Um, I had several people over the last month or two ask me, Hey, Psycho, why don't you do a vinyl room tour, you know, instead of these, these kitchen shots? Well, okay, I'm going to tell you the God's honest truth, all right? Even though the apartment that I'm in here right now... um. I I have the biggest bedroom, okay? I do, but it's not conducive to trying to shoot videos. It's really not. It's kind of poor. Not only that, my vinyl collection 
isn't entirely complete. Uh, I think I took a picture, a, a small picture, if you want to see at least a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about, on my Psychos Platters Facebook page, okay? And if you haven't liked it, please do. Shame on you if you haven't. But if you go on my profile pic to Psychos Platters, you will see me holding albums. I think Monkeys and a Dio album is what I'm holding. In front of a bookcase filled full of records. Well, I have to tell you that I've got one, two, three, four bookcases. Four full bookcases full of vinyl. And then I have stuff slightly scattered around here. Um, my 45s are summer in boxes, some are not. I don't have a vinyl room yet. In fact, when I move, hopefully, later in the summer, the, I, there's a couple places I'm looking at. Then I will finally have my vinyl room, and I will be able to give you all a grand day tour on this. So until then, that's why there's not a vinyl room tour, because everything's scattered all over the place. Oh, and half my collection is in the state of Illinois. Yeah, I have two states with a vinyl. So there'll be a, I'm going to have enough for at least another 10, 15 episodes worth of just that stuff alone. So where I'm going on this is that I happen to be at the Salvation Army, and I'm, there was a bunch of 50s albums. I'm like, oh, yes, I haven't seen some 50s albums in forever. Unfortunately, I go to go open up the album, you know, great, great cover here I'm going to show you. The vinyl was, it looked like a dog chewed it. It was missing like, like a chunk of it. So they let me have this for nothing. Yeah, that's right. Fats Domino, okay, the fabulous Mr. D on Imperial Records. Um, I just like this stuff. Eventually what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to put them in frames. And I'll put them around in my vinyl room, you know, some of these empty classic covers. Um, so that was what I found for that, too. I also found, I thought this was kind of odd, and, and bear with me here. I don't know really who this guy was, but Jim Eanes, Jim Eanes, a statesman of bluegrass music. That's right. Uh, the This is from Michigan, Jackson, Michigan, okay? And on the back here... It tells a little story. It does. About half the album here is told by somebody. But the thing that's kind of funny about this is this. I go to go look at the condition of the vinyl, which it's just a basic green green label. Okay. Uh, this one put out in, if I remember correctly, the 70s. Couldn't quite get that figured out. But here's the thing that was fun. With the album, let's see if I can get it out. Where is it? I know it's in here. I found a letter. Yeah, there was a letter in this album. And it says, get, okay, so it's from 1977, this letter. But from Jim Eanes, personal stationery from Martinsville, Virginia. Now, I can barely read this, but I think this is kind of cool. Uh, basically, he went off and he explained his biography of his life. And it just basically, little things like he started working professionally in 1940 with Roy Hall in the Blue Ridge. God, I can't even read that. In 44, he worked with his dad, who happened to be a five-string banjo player. It says here, in 46, 47, I had a group called the Blue Mountain Boys working at... It was a station in Tennessee. I can't figure this. Oh, in Knoxville. It says, it says in 48 for two and a half months, I was one of the original Foggy Mountain Boys. Yeah, yeah, how about that, huh? Uh, Lester, Earl, I can't read the rest of this, and myself. I left them and joined Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys in April of 48 at the Grand Auto Opry, working until December 48 and 49. I signed with Capitol Records, and oh geez, something about for a year, and then barnstormed country 
con circuit in Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, and Baltimore before returning home in early 51. In March of 51, I organized the Shenandoah Valley Boys at WBTM in, I want to say, Dan Danville, Virginia, signed with Decca Records through 55, and wrote over 36, you know, recorded over 36 songs. August 55, I ch Martinsville, Virginia, as a DJ. Okay, and so W H E E, we, we, um, and worked. Oh, jeez. And still worked the country show circuit with the, the Shenandoah Valley Boys. I signed with Stanley Records. No, Star Day Records. Sorry, Star Day Records in 57. Jeez, this guy's got a career. Stayed with the company till 62. In 64, band disbanded. 64 through 68 was in radio. 69, I organized the late Re Red oh geez, band and worked with them from WWVA Wheeling, West Virginia, Jamboree for a year. Since 70, I've been working bluegrass festivals, <clears throat> shows, club circuits all over the country. I am also involved in part owner of Dominion Record Company of Salem, Virginia, manufacturing records and tapes. To date, we've recorded and written over 200 songs. If you ever pass through Southern Virginia in your travels, be sure to drop by and visit. Good luck in your music career. Signed, Jim Eanes. Uh, this was addressed to somebody named Sonny back in 77. I just thought that was really cool. That's a piece of history that... You're not going to you're not going to get really you know straight straight from the straight from the hand. So the, I've never heard of this guy, but boom, he was there. He was doing the action of things. I just thought it was really neat. Okay, other little bits and pieces. I finally got a copy of this Mint Condition, The Escape Club, Wild Wild West on Atlantic from '89. Good stuff there, or '88? Yes, '88. I'm sorry. Mint Condition on this one. Um, Rod Stewart's Out of Order from 88. That's right. On here was his, in my opinion, it was his last last rock album because he pretty much went in different directions after that. <coughs> A couple good songs on here. Lost in You was the big hit. Uh, written with, you know, Rod Stewart and Andy Taylor from, uh, from Where Kids? Where's Andy Taylor from? Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Duran Duran and The Power Station. He was in both of those. And in fact, he's got a lot of the Power Station people on here, in particular in this track for Lost in You. He's got Andy Taylor and Tony Thompson um, from Power Station. Uh, let's see here. Who else is on here? Uh, Bernard Edwards from Chic. Billy Payne from Little Feet. David Lindley from X-Ray Specs. Um, who else? Anybody interesting? Uh, Tony Brock from The Babies. Jim Cregan, who worked with uh, Rod and, and, and a bunch of other people at the time, too. Let's see here. Anybody else? Uh, a really good bunch of people, though, on here. This, this, this album was probably one of the last bigger hits. Oh, Dwayne Hitchings. He, was, uh, he worked with uh, The Image in the mid-'70s and another, another band, I think, off of Capricorn Records, if I remember correctly. He worked with them, too. Um, but yeah, so good stuff here. I, I, I love it. Of course, on the, on your Warner Brothers label, mint condition. Uh, these ones I've all paid 99 cents at the vintage stock that was pretty local back in, uh, oh, I don't know, it was sometime around before Christmas. Uh, never had, never had an album from this band. That's right, Gamma One off of Electro Records, kids. Uh, Ronnie Montrose's after he disbanded Montrose made Gamma, but he always came up with the with the strangest, coolest covers, in my opinion. Here's the back side of the band. I gotta confess, I don't know who else is in the band. They they didn't hint around at this. There is no liner sleeves and everything, but of course on Red Atlantic, I mean Electra, excuse me. Um, 
kind of miss Ronnie. I'll tell you, he uh, he was a kick-ass guitar player, and he found the talent, didn't he? Because Montrose was a kick-ass band. All right, uh, let's see here. This one I thought was kind of cool. In 1978, Return of the Wanderer from Dion. Yeah, promo copy on uh, on Life Song Records. I love these good old demonstration, not for sale, mint condition, white label. Uh, not a lot of people that threw themselves on this one. Cashman and West uh, produced this thing. Uh, they had solo albums on ABC Records. They also were involved with Jim Croce at one point or another as well. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else off of here. Eric Weisberg on Pedal Steel. I've heard that name before, too. Uh, pretty much, though, that's that's about it, but uh, but pretty neat, I think. Here's here's this here's this smiling little face. This was when he was uh, trying to make his comeback. This actually has a very light time stamp on here from May of '78. That's when you know whoever had this in their DJ collection. This one here was also a little odd too. Uh, I've heard of this band, but this is the first time I've ever actually seen a vinyl. Alan Vega and Martin Rez. Suicide, that's the name of the band. This is from 19, I want to say 1980. But the reason why I grabbed this, it was I saw on the back here, it was produced by Rick Ocasek from the Cars, so I thought this has got to be kind of cool. This is also a promo copy. It's, uh, it's the stamp that on the back. You've got, there's the front and back of these guys. And also, I know you can't tell, but it's on Antilles Records, which is a uh, offshoot of Island Records, but it actually does say promo copy not for sale off to the side in the black label here. Um, but yeah, so I can't wait to listen to that. That ought to be half interesting. Uh, okay, the surprise. This was just too cool. You never know when you're going to find something that, well, to you is pretty stellar. Uh, I happen to be going, we, we have a couple used bookshops here in town, all right? Uh, but but I this was this was actually put on a on a shelf of prominence. Why nobody bought this for a month is beyond me. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for this, but it was a bargain. Let's just leave it at that. But I now have for a while here in my possession. A Beatles 1966 tour book. <laughs> That's right. Finally, I get myself in my possession a Beatles tour book from 66. Um, I mean, I'll show you a couple pages. I mean, the binding is good, but I'll just show you a couple pages. Now, let's see here. Uh, Paul Page. Some of the um, the back cover shots I could tell were pictures taken from um, the paperback writer and the Rain music videos. So you could tell it was like it was time frame. Let's see. I showed you. Uh, let's see. Let's give you a Ringo page. Are the fabulous Ringo? Okay. Now, I don't know if these have been reproduced at all or anything like that. This one here is, the binding is in really great shape. Everything's, I would, you know, yes, there is some, there is some creases, okay, along the edges. But overall, I would say at least VG plus on this book, minimum. Uh, I tried to figure this out. Um... Somebody, though, was half smart, or at least I thought so. K.H., who wrote slightly in an inside spine, wrote the whole set list from the show she saw. I went and checked on Wikipedia. They did not change the set list at all. So here's the thing. Down here in Arkansas, they didn't do a show, okay? The closest, and I'm just going to take a guess on this, that KH went to see 
was either the St. Louis show or the Memphis show, which the Memphis show, well, that one, unfortunately, there was, you know, there was death threats for that show. They thought they were getting shot at during, the, during that concert when in reality somebody threw firecrackers. But Lennon got jumpy. I don't blame him um, because of the whole uh, we're bigger than Jesus comment that was misconstrued uh, in the press. By the way, slight side note, uh, the Memphis show from 66 was recorded back then. It was a front row uh, recording on a Grundig recorder, I'm told. I read about this in Rolling Stone briefly, and if I remember correctly, I don't know if Apple Corps purchased the tapes on this, or you know, but I know they were sold from the guy who recorded it back in 66. Supposedly, he also took a picture or two from the Memphis show, too, uh, as well as backup for proof of all of this. Um, there's been rumors going around that there may be an anthology for, finally, after all these years, because one of the discs, I'm told, is going to be the Memphis 66 show, which I, I really would like to hear. I really would. The, um, there is really no live except for BBC, of course, that is legitimately released anymore. Live at the Hollywood Bowl was put out in 77. I'm told the reason why it was released in the first place was because the Beatles needed the money. They all needed the money. I'm not sure how true that is, but that's why Capital put that and Rarities out because of the cash flow situation. But the thing is, is I'm also told that Hollywood Bowl was discontinued uh, sometime in the mid to late 80s on vinyl, they, they went, so, you know, that got discontinued. There's companies that are fighting for reissuing the Star Club tapes, which if you've got the original pressing on Linga song, good for you, because I had it at one point and I ended up having to sell my first collection back in the 80s. Well, I'm not going to lie, for diapers and formula, I had to do it and bills. You know, it had to be done, and I still wish I had that copy. So what I'm getting at is, is that they really kind of need to do, I don't know, at least maybe, if not an Anthology 4, uh, Apple Core needs to put out like a couple CD set. You know, give us, give us like, I don't know, give us a 64 show, a 65 show, and a 66 show. Okay, fine, maybe there's not going to be much difference between the sets, but the point of the matter is, is I really would like to hear it. Uh, and maybe a cleaned up version of the, uh, of the, con the rooftop concert from Let It Be. We want Let It Be on DVD too, kids. Why isn't it out? Hmm? It's 2014, 50-year Amer anniversary of America? Come on, let's put it out. Who do we got a bitch at? I don't know. All right, <clears throat> I know I'm long-winded. This one I didn't expect to be long-winded. 28 minutes. Uh, Wax Museum with Ronnie Dark. Night Owl Lounge with Mike Adams. Record Collector Magazine. Shindig Magazine. Record Collector Paradise on Facebook. Thrifty Music Collectors Group on Facebook. Monkeys Fan Club The Flower Gang on Facebook. Go Check out all those, please. You will not regret it. And please, enemies, friends, frenemies, like and subscribe on this YouTube channel and on my Facebook page, please. Interesting, hopefully, developments coming soon. Slightly delayed due to my health, but they will be happening real soon. Take care. God bless. Rock on.